Well, I was a full-time carer for my beautiful mum, Joan. Uh, I cared for my mum for nearly six years at home and my mum had vascular dementia. Uh, I think the last experience and probably the most crucial and important uh, to myself and to my mum uh, was in the, in the last days of my mum's life. Uh, uh, my mum had been quite poorly for a while and been in and out of hospital a few times and I was quite unsure, kind of stumbling through it as a person and stumbling through what to do most days. And in the last mornings, uh, I went in to wake my mum up to give her, her breakfast and her medication and I, I couldn't wake my mum. And I d really didn't know what to do. I thought she was tired at first, and, but my mum and couldn't figure it out and, and, and started to panic. And I called NHS 24 because I think when you're long time caring for, for a loved one, you're never sure, you don't want to be calling nine, nine, all these things and, 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 and the things you're unsure of. And I felt lonely very often caring for my mum, but that was one of the loneliest moments of my life because it was just the two of us in the house. I was unsure what to do and uh, I was unsure where to go and I called NHS 24. And uh, I had an amazing experience uh, in such a dreadful time, <laughs> if you can describe it like that. Uh, I just remember screaming on the phone. I, in fact, I screamed so loud that my neighbour heard. Uh, didn't come in, but they heard. <laughs> and I had tried to have a conversation about, uh, that my mum won't wake up and I don't know what to do. And uh, the person I spoke to was amazing. They, 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 they calmed me down. They got me to check a couple of things, and while I did that, uh, I sat, and I, I, I remember saying, you know, I, I don't know if I should call nine, I don't know really know what I should be doing just now. And while I was doing that, they called the emergency services for me and stayed on the phone with me. And uh, at the loneliest moment of my life, and amongst many lonely moments, I didn't feel as lonely because somebody was maybe not physically beside me, but they were right beside me. And they stayed on that phone until they heard the ambulance technicians coming come, come, come in the room. And I'll never forget that, because these moments uh, stay with you forever. You, as a son, trying to care for your mum, with lots of things that you don't understand. These moments also help you through that moment. They bring a wee bit of hope or clarity. But they also help you recover in many ways, because these are the moments that define and stand out in everything you've tried to do everything you're hoping to do and, and the bits you get wrong stick with you a long time and the bits you didn't understand often overpower the good bits you do and that's the bits you sit and think about so with a clearer head now and reflecting back I realised how important that moment was that somebody understood that I was scared understood that I was maybe agitated and fearful and, and possibly angry you know I was I was angry at dementia and, and the things that it had taken from us and was where I could see in front of me was, was, was finally taken from us. So that, that stuck with me, that, 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 that relationship eh, of just not feeling as scared and alone at that moment. Eh, it helps me reflect on it. It helped me at the moment, but it actually helps me still to this day because uh, I look back at it and I wasn't as alone as I felt at that moment before I picked the phone up. And I think we, as a son, and, and, and trying to raise awareness of dementia, everything we do is, is, is underpinned by the five must do with me steps that we're asking all health and social care professionals to take into account. And the five key bits are what matters to you and who matters to you. What kind of information do you need? Nothing about me without me and flexible services. So those conversations with NHS 24 absolutely are about the five must-dos. They're about what matters to you at that moment. They're about who matters to you. They're about the kind of information that you really need at that moment. And, and don't make decisions about me, make them with me. Support me and help me and together we'll make the right decision here and flexible. And, and that, that kind of that describes it. And underpinned by that is the, key, the three key points. Take the time to ask people what matters to them. Take the time to really listen to what matters to people. And once you've asked and once you've listened, you have an opportunity to do. So never for me, uh, and, and often we, we, we talk about frontline services from nurses and care assistants and the dedication and the passion. 
But that's the same as that conversation and that person on the other end of that phone. That's about dedication and passion and listening and understanding. So I think um, the NHS 24, uh, at its best, epitomises the five must do with me steps that, that all health and social, we're asking all health and social care professionals to, to heed. Uh, and uh, it's an important memory. It's, it's, it's changed what that memory might look like or feel like. And, and uh, I didn't feel as alone then. And actually, I don't feel as alone now looking back at it.